What's good, man, family? In today's video, we're doing a review on how to factor quadratic equations as well as how to graph them. And if this video is helpful for you, let us know by smashing the like button. First set of examples, family, we're factoring regular trinomials. So we're looking for two factors that multiply to give us C and add to give us that middle term. So this is why we like to write the factors out, because this is the only combination that could do that. Multiply to three, add to four. So when I go in, I know I could do x plus three times x plus one is equal to zero. And when C is positive, that lets us know that our factors are going to have the same sign, whether they're both positive, both negatives. So now I set both of these equal to zero. I get x is equal to negative three. And when I do the same thing with one, I know x is equal to negative one. So that's the first example. Second example, a larger number now, right? So when we draw these factors, we have 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 3, and 5 times 6. Now for us to get that negative 1, right, this is the only combination that works. And I know C is negative, so our signs are not going to be the same. 1 is positive, 1 is negative. So when I go in and I put x and 6 and x and 5, the larger number always takes a sign of that middle term. So this is going to be negative. 5 is positive. Set them equal to 0. x is equal to 6. Or for our second factor, x is equal to negative 5. Now in our third example, and you'll sometimes see y instead of 0, but it's still a quadratic equation. So we do the same thing, right? It's going to multiply to give us negative 5. When we add, it gives us 4. And because 5 is negative, we know those signs are probably not the same. So I have my factors, x and 5, x and 1. So 5 is going to be positive to get that 4x. 1 is going to be negative. We set it equal to 0 x plus 5 is equal to 0, so we know x is equal to negative 5, or x minus 1 is equal to 0, so we know x is equal to positive 1. We're talking about factoring with the greatest common factor, the GCF. And what we do is we try to divide the equation by a specific number where we could divide all three terms, and this x squared is now just 1. It's just x squared by itself. So if I pulled out 5 for the greatest common factor, what's left over after I divide everything by 5 is x squared minus 4x minus 12 is equal to 0. Now, after we do that, we pull out that greatest common factor, we're focusing on what's inside the parentheses, and we're factoring that with the same rules from the first part of this video. So multiplies to give me 12, add to gives me 4. So I know off rip. We're talking about x minus 6 times x plus 2, and that is equal to 0. Now, when I set all my factors equal to 0, we're going to throw 5 away because it's not equal to 0. So we have x minus 6 is equal to 0. So x is equal to positive 6. Or x plus 2 is equal to 0. So we know x is equal to negative 2. Now, second example, same thing. We could divide all three of these terms and pull a GCF out of 4. So when I pull that 4 out, everything else gets divided by 4. So we have x squared plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Focus on what's inside. So the factors we're going to have is what? x plus 1 times x plus 2, and that is equal to 0. When we multiply, we get 2. When we add, we get our 3. So same thing. 4 is equal to 0. Not true, so extraneous solution, we throw it out. x plus 1 is equal to 0, so we know x is equal to negative 1. And our second factor, x plus 2 is equal to 0, so we know x is equal to negative 2. Okay? So now we go to this last example. Right, we know we're talking about greatest common factors. So I could divide everything by two. That will give me a lead coefficient of one. So I pull out two. We're left with x squared plus 5x 
plus six is equal to zero. In family, like I said, students always, you don't focus on this two. You only focus on what's inside and factoring that. Two stays the same. We have x plus two times x plus three. Right? When we multiply, it's going to give us six. When we add, it gives us five. Let's rewrite this three. So first factor, two is equal to zero. Not true. X plus two is equal to zero. So we know X is equal to negative two. And then our second answer, X plus two, three is equal to zero. So we know X is equal to negative three after we subtract it and move it from one side to the other. So this part of the video family, we're talking about rearranging the quadratic equation so we could factor. Because when we factor trinomials, we want it to be in this form. AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. When we look here, that's not the same format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 18X. Right? So I have X squared minus 18X is equal to negative 81. Still not in that form. So now I'm going to add 81 on both sides. So I have X squared minus 18X plus 81 is equal to zero. Now that it is in the same format, right? Standard form for quadratics, we could factor it, okay? And when I factor this, this is going to be X minus nine times X minus nine, which is equal to zero. So this is a perfect square trinomial, meaning we multiply the same binomial by itself to get our trinomial. So x minus 9 is equal to 0. We know x is equal to positive 9. And just understand that this could also be written as x minus 9 squared. Okay? Second example now, we don't have to move as much things, only the 21. So once I subtract it from my first step and I do the same thing on the other side, I have x squared plus 4x minus 21 is equal to 0. Let's say you drew your factors out, right? I wrote them out, I drew them. 1 times 21, and I think we have 3 times 7. So we know to get that 4 in the middle, it has to be 3 and 7. So I go through, we have x and 7, x and 3, and this is equal to 0. Larger number is positive, there goes my positive. Smaller number is going to take the subtraction sign. So we set them equal to zero, we get x is equal to negative seven, and then we set the other one equal to zero, and we're gonna get x is equal to positive three. We're factoring quadratics with lead coefficients. So the way that we could do this is using the slip and slide method, or we could use the quadratic formula. So we multiply a and c. So x squared minus eight x, plus 15 is equal to zero. Now we have a regular trinomial and we're gonna follow those rules, right? So we have x and x, right? We look at our, we look at our factors, one times 15, three times five. We know it has to be five and three, and we know if c is positive, it's gonna take, our factors are gonna have the same sign. So they're both gonna be negative because they have to add to give us negative eight. Now at this step, we're almost done, but we have to go back and divide by that same number we multiplied. This simplifies to x minus one is equal to zero, so we get x is equal to positive one. And this right here, because we can't divide and get a whole number, we slide it in front of the variable. So five x minus three, is equal to zero. Once we add three on both sides, we get five X is equal to three. And once we divide by five, we get X is equal to three over five. Now our second example, same exact thing. Lead coefficient, we're gonna use our slip and slide. So now we have X squared plus five X plus six is equal to zero. Just multiply it six and one. Now we're factoring this, and we already know what this is going to be because we did it just before. So we have x plus two times x plus three. Yes, family, now we gotta go back and divide by six. 
So these are fractions, right? Meaning we have to always reduce it to the lowest number. So this is really one over three, and this is one half, all right? So because we can't divide and get a whole number, we're gonna slip that denominator in front of X. So my first factor, three X plus one is equal to zero, right? 3x is equal to negative 1 after we subtract 1. Now we divide by 3. x is equal to negative 1 over 3. In my second example, we have 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. I have 2x is equal to negative 1 once I subtract 1. Final answer, x is equal to negative 1 over 2. So please don't forget to divide. And if you have a fraction, see if you can reduce it. This one, we could not reduce it. So that's why it stayed the same. Now in this problem, it's unique because we have to rearrange the equation into standard form. So first thing I want to do is add 2x squared. So I have 4x squared minus 8 is equal to 31 x all right still not in standard form so i subtract 31 x now we have 4 x squared minus 31 x minus 8 is equal to 0. we are going to use slip and slide so i'm going to multiply a and c which is 4 and 8. so now i get x squared minus 31 x minus 32 is equal to 0. Right now, this is easy to factor. We're gonna have let's see what do we're gonna get for this. Oh, okay, we're gonna have x minus 32 by x plus 1. Now, as I grab the calculator and get some, I mean, not calculator, the eraser and get more space, right? So, erase this problem. Remember, now we got to go back. And divide. So now at this step, I divide by 4. This turns into x minus 8 is equal to 0. So my first factor is x is equal to 8. And this second factor can't divide and get a whole number. So I have 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. Subtract 1 on both sides. 4x is equal to negative 1. And once I divide by 4, we know x is equal to negative 1 over 4 as a final answer. Next part of this video, we're talking about the difference of squares, and I got two different methods to solve. So remember the difference of squares. We have the same exact binomial with opposite signs. That's how the middle term cancels out. So right here, my answer should be x plus 4 times x minus 4, and this is equal to 0. And our answer would be x is equal to negative 4 and positive 4. I right? would, would have two answers. Now, think about it, right? When we multiply these two together, let's use the box method. We have x, negative 4, x, and positive 4. So once we go through, we have x squared minus 4x plus 4x minus 16. So that's how those middle terms cancel out, all right? Now, another way to solve this is the square root method. And the square root method, you always use, right, when we have an exponent and the just the x squared term and the constant. So if I was using the square root method, I would add 16 on both sides. So I would x squared is equal to 16. And we know to get rid of an exponent, we got to take its root. So I take its root. x is equal to what? Plus or minus the square root of 16. So x is equal to plus or minus 4, like we stated. Now in our second example, right, same thing. So let's say if I started off with the square root method. So I add 49 on both sides. I have x squared is equal to 49. Use my square root method to get rid of the exponent. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 49. So I know x is equal to positive or negative 7. 
if we factored it as a difference of squares, we'd have x plus 7 times x minus 7 is equal to 0. And then we'll set our factors to get the same exact answer. x is equal to negative 7. And x minus 7 is equal to 0 to get x is equal to 7. So there's two different ways to solve the same exact problem. Now our last example, right, we should already know. Square root of x is just x, right? Square root of 64 is 8. All we need to do, switch the signs. Oops. Just like that. But let's say we did the square root method. So x squared, add 64 on both sides, is equal to 64. Square root method to get rid of our exponent. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 64. So we know x is equal to plus or minus 8. Another way you may see this is x is equal to, and it embraces negative 8, comma, 8. So there's different ways that you'll see the same answer expressed. Finishing off the difference of squares, family, one thing they like to do is give us a lead coefficient, but it's still the difference of squares, okay? So let's say we did the square root method. So I add 18 on both sides, right? We have 2 x squared is equal to 18. We know we're trying to get x by itself. We divide by 2. x squared is equal to 9. Now we're able to use the square root method because x is absolutely by itself. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9. So we know x is equal to what? Plus or minus 3. Now let's say that we didn't use that method and we were trying to factor it a different way. So same problem. This is what we could do. I could pull out 2. So I pull out 2. I'm left with x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. We know this is a difference of squares, right? What does it turn out to be? 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. That is equal to 0. We set our factors equal to 0, throw 2 out, we know x plus 3 is equal to 0, so we get x is equal to negative 3 after we subtract on both sides, and x minus 3 is equal to 0. Once we add 3 to get x by itself, we get x is equal to positive 3. Another method with factoring quadratics is using the quadratic formula, which we have right here. And this will, you, this will work with any quadratic as long as it's in standard form and you correctly plug in. So let's do it. We have x is equal the opposite of b. b is negative 10. So now it becomes positive 10 plus or minus b squared. So 10 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 2. And this is all over 2 times a. And we know a is 1. So we simplify now, x is equal to 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 plus 8 all over 2. So we get x is equal to 10 plus or minus the square root of 108 over 2. Now family, there's two ways to do this. We could stop right here. And what do I mean by stop? So let's get the square root for 108. This is going to give us 10, let's just say 10.39. We're going to keep it right there, right? So now we're going to split the equation. X is equal to 10 plus or minus 10.39 over 2. So if we do the first equation, right? X is equal to 10 plus 10.39 over 2. What are we going to get? Let's see. We're going to get, hold on, let's make sure. Yeah, all right, so we're going to get x is equal to 10.20 once we simplify, right? Now let's go back and do the other one. So we have x is equal to 10 minus 
10.39 divided by 2. So once we do that, we're going to get x is equal to negative 0 0.20 once we round. Now, what I'm going to do now is let's break this down further because teachers are going to show you this just to help avoid mistakes. So when we look at 108, right? So let's go up here. X is equal to 10 plus or minus. We could break 108 down as 36 times 3, right? All over 2. And when we simplify again, we're going to get X is equal to 10 plus or minus. 36 comes out now as 6. Radical 3 stays under over 2. Now, mind you, we could divide all three of these terms. So X is equal to 5 plus or minus, not 2 radical 3, I'm sorry, 3 radical 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare this answer to these two. So we know radical, let's, let's see what 3 radical 3 is. All right, we're going to get 5.2. This is what this expression equals to. So when we go back, x is equal to what? 5 plus 5.20, we get x is equal to 10.20. Same answer. We go back, x is equal to 5 minus 5.20, we get x is equal to 0, negative 0 0.2, which is the same exact answer. Second problem on quadratic formula family, we have to rearrange it into standard form because the signs are important. So let's see I subtracted 4x and the new quadratic formula is x squared minus 4x minus 11 is equal to 0. Now when we start substituting in, right, x is equal to the opposite of b. So 4 is positive. If we kept it in this same format, we would have put a negative in front of it. This is why it's important to put it in standard form, okay? So now we have that plus or minus what? 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 11, and that's all over 2 times a. We know a is 1. So we continue to go further. 4 plus or minus. 16 plus, that's 44, yes it is, 44 over 2. Now once we clean up my, um, my radical, we're going to get x is equal to 4 plus or minus radical 60 over 2. So for this video, I'm going to break down radical 60, right? So we're going to break this down as 4 times 15. When we take out our square root, we have 2 radical 15, okay? So now we go up at top, x is equal to what? 4 plus or minus 2 radical 15 all over 2. Just like the last problem, let's simplify. So x is equal to what? 2 plus or minus radical 15. This is much easier than trying to do all this in one step, family. All right? So now we go down. X is equal to, let me see what we get for radical 15. I get 3.87. So let's put that. 3.87. So X is equal to 2 plus 3.87. And we know X is equal to 2 minus 3.87. And at this step, let's see what we get. We have x is equal to 5.87. You can round it to x is equal to 5.9, right? Depending on what your teacher says. And in this one, we have x is equal to negative 1.87. Or if we round, x is equal to negative 1.9. So any of these will work as well. Last factoring method for this video, we're talking about completing the square. And if this video has been helpful so far, smash the like button for us. So for us to complete the square, we want to create a perfect square trinomial. For us to do that, we have to look at the BX term, the middle term with the single X, take half of it, and then square it. 
that completes the perfect square trinomial. So we have x squared plus 16x. Half of 16 is 8. 8 squared is 4. I mean, 8 squared, I'm sorry, is 64. So we add 64 to complete the square. And then since we're talking about equations, we have to balance it by adding 64 on the other side. Now, I focus here, and I want to break this down back to the binomial that gave me that answer. All right? So that binomial is x plus 8 squared. Once we expand that and multiply it, this is what we get. And this is going to be equal to negative 59 plus 64, which is 5. So at this step, we go back into the square root method. This is another time we use it. Why? Get rid of that exponent. So take the square root there, take the square root on the other side. I'm left with x plus 8 is equal to the plus or minus the square root of 5. Now, to get x by itself, we subtract 8. So x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 5. Final answer. Now, problem number 2, same exact thing. We could just subtract 16 and factor. Probably, pop, yeah, factor. We possibly could factor. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But let's say it was, it's not factorable, right? So we go through, we create our perfect square trinomial. So x squared plus 4x, when we take half of 4, is 2, 2 squared is 4. So we complete the perfect square trinomial by adding 4, do the same thing on the other side. Now we break it back down to its binomial that will multiply to give us that trinomial, which is what? x plus 2 squared. If you ever forget, just take your b term, divide it by 2. That will give us this right there, okay? That's equal to 20. We know we need to get rid of the exponent, so let's take the square root of both sides. x plus 2 is now equal to plus or minus the square root of 20. I am going to break this down. So let's break this down. 2, 4 times 5. This simplifies to 2 radical 5, right? So in our last step, when I subtract 2, I know x is equal to what? Negative 2 plus or minus 2 radical 5, which is just radical 20 broken down. Moving on to graphing quadratic equations now, family. First thing we want to do is to get our x-intercept, a.k.a. the solutions. So we're going to factor. So once we factor, we're going to have x plus 4 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now I set my factors equal to 0. We're going to get x is equal to negative 4 for our first x-intercept. And once we do the second one, we're going to get x is equal to negative 1 for the second x-intercept. So those are two points we have. Now let's say we get the y-intercept. So we make x 0. So 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus 4. So we know y is equal to 4. So we're going to graph the point 0, 4. So now we have three points. We have when x is equal to negative 4, when x is equal to negative 1, and our y-intercept of 0, 4. Now for us to get the last point, the vertex, aka and the axis of symmetry, we're going to do the opposite of b over 2 times a. We know b is positive 5, so we're talking about the opposite of 5 over 2 times a. a is 1. So now 5 is negative. We simplify to get x is equal to negative 5 over 2. So mind you, family, this is just the x coordinate for the vertex. We now have to plug this in to solve and get the y coordinate. So when I do that, we're going to have y is equal to negative 5 over 2 squared plus 5 times negative 5 over 2, and we're going to add 4 at the end. So anytime we square fractions, we just square the top and bottom number. So this turns to be 25 over 4 minus 25 over 2 and we bring down the plus 4. These two do not have the same denominator, so we can't combine them. So the, what we're going to do is multiply top and bottom by a 2, so we have similar denominators. 
y is equal to 25 over 4 minus 50 over 4. Let's bring down plus 4. Simplify more. y is equal to negative 25 over 4 plus 4. We notice that we do not have the same denominators. So I'm going to change this 4 into 16 over 4 so that it has the same exact value, right? Same exact denominator, I should say. So now I know y is equal to negative 9 over 4. So now we have our vertex, which is equal to what? Negative 5 over 2, comma, negative 9 over 4. So when we simplify this, right, let's get some more space. So now when we think about this, all it's saying is that the vertex is equal to what? Negative 2 and 1 half and 2 by negative 2 and 1 fourth. So when I go out here, here goes negative 2 and 1 half by 2 and 1 fourth. It will be somewhere around here. And now we notice we have three to four points to draw that parabola graph. Now, real quick, before we go to our next problem, let's talk about domain. We know all real numbers, right? This graph is going to get wider and wider, cover most of the x-axis. Now let's talk about the range. The range could be expressed two ways. Y is greater than or equal to negative 9 over 4. Or we can see it as an inequality where they're saying bracket negative 9 over 4 to infinity. If they ask us for our solutions roots, we would say x is equal to negative 4 comma negative 1 if they express it as a solution set. In this next problem, we have to be mindful because there's a negative in front of our quadratic equation, meaning the graph is opening down. So if we were over here to factor, what we would do is take out that negative and focus on x squared plus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. So now once we factor, we would have x plus 5 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. This is how we would find the intercept, solutions roots. So we know x is equal to negative 5. In our second one, we know x plus 1 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 1. So we already have our two, our two intercepts, right? So let's graph it. We have negative 1 and we have negative 5. Now, let's say I go in there, right? With my calculator. Now, let's say I go in there and I want to find out the y intercept. So let's do that as well. y is equal to the opposite of x squared. So 0 squared minus 6 times 0 minus 5. So we know the intercept is y is equal to negative 5, right? 0, negative 5. So let's point, let's plot that too. So here goes that point. Now what it comes down to is we are trying to do or find a vertex. So we're talking about the opposite of B over 2 times A, right? Let me grab my calculator just to make sure I have this. All right, so the opposite of B, so we know B is negative becomes positive. 6 over 2 times negative 1, because that is negative. So we know X is equal to what? negative 3. That is the x coordinate for our vertex. Now let's plug it in and see if we can figure out what exactly is the y coordinate. So when we come right here, y is equal to the opposite of what? Negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3 minus 5. Let's get some more space. 
So when I simplify this more, we have y is equal to, right? Even though this is nine, we have to bring that negative sign out in front. So negative nine, or the opposite of three squared. So negative nine plus 18 minus five. So once we subtract, we're gonna get y is equal to nine minus five. So y is equal to four. So this is important because this is our vertex, negative three, four, All right? So let's make some more lines. So I go out one, two, three, and I go up four. So it would be somewhere right here. And then I could draw my parabola through the points that I have, and let's just label them. Y-intercept, X-intercept, vertex negative three, four, and we have negative five, zero. Now, before we wrap this video on up, let's talk about the key features of the graph. So let's say if we had domain, domain, I'm gonna tell you guys, if it opens down or up, it's always all real numbers. Always all real numbers. The only time it changes is if it's not a function, meaning it opens up to the left or to the right, then it's not all real numbers. But if it opens up or down, always all real numbers. Now let's talk about the range. Our range is what? Negative infinity to four. We use the bracket because it's included. Now another way to express the same answer is y is less than or equal to four right if we're talking about these zeros to this quadratic uh equation or parabola x is equal to negative five negative one and if they ask us for a maximum right we always have maximums when the graph opens down our maximum is just the vertex that is the highest point on the graph so we have a maximum at negative three, four, and this is how you will graph the, the <laughs> quadratic equation. Really hope this video was helpful for you, family, on factoring and graphing quadratic equations. If it was, smash the like button for us, subscribe to our channel, and join our EOC and SAT and GRE membership if you guys need help on passing your test on the first time. The link is down below. Thank you guys so much for joining Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.